Hello my friends, I hope you're doing well today. I know I am, because guess what? I got another letter from Ferguson today. Would you like to hear it? Last time you met Ferguson, he'd had a little bit of a sad day. He tried to make some friends with some flies, and they flew away. Shall we see what Ferguson gets up to today? Alright, let's get started. A large cowbell hung outside the front door of the artist's house. <gasps> I think Ferguson has finally found an artist to paint him. Ferguson reached up and tried to grab a hold of the long rope, but it was just out of reach. He tried jumping to reach the rope and finally managed to grab hold of it. As Ferguson swung backwards and forwards, the bell began to ring. Ding dong, ding dong. He was still hanging there when Clifton, the artist, opened the door. G'day, said Ferguson, still swinging. Ah, uh, I don't suppose your doorbell was made for wombats? Clifton laughed as he watched the wombat clinging to the rope, swinging backwards and forwards. He lifted Ferguson off the bell rope. What is it I can do for you, sir? He asked. I'm Ferguson Wombat. I'm an important wombat and I'd like you to have my portrait painted. It's uh, it's going to be hung in the biggest gallery in the world. I thought that as you're an important artist, you'd be pleased to paint an important wombat like me. He held out his paw to shake hands. Clifton smiled. He was amused by Ferguson's offer. He reached forward and shook Ferguson's paw. Come on in then. We'll talk it over. Ferguson looked, looked at his feet and pointed. What uh, what about my daisy roots? Uh, uh, boots, he asked. <laughs> They're all right, said Glifton. Inside, they sat at a large table. The walls were covered with paintings of important people. Ferguson couldn't take his eyes off them. It sounds exciting, Ferguson. He could tell that each one was important without even knowing who they were. He looked at the paintings one by one, and while Ferguson watched the paintings, Clifton watched Ferguson. <laughs> he liked Ferguson's confidence. Me too, Clifton. <laughs> well, began Clifton, tell me why I should want to paint a wombat. Wombats are important not animals, said Ferguson. I might be slow, but they're clever, and they do a lot of thinking. And I'm a very special wombat. And I'm sure that when my portrait is hung in a big gallery, people will see just how important I am. Well, I'm not sure how important you are, Ferguson. But all the same, if you think it would help if I painted your portrait, then I will. But I can't promise it will be hung in a gallery. Galleries get to decide to do that. That must be frustrating for Ferguson. He's got a big goal and he really wants to do it. But he's not in charge of all of it. It's not even going to be his choice in the end, is it? It's up to a gallery. Huh. How do you think Ferguson will handle that? Great, said Ferguson, jumping off his chair. He waddled on over to one of the large portraits hanging on the wall. I'm going to be famous like this one, you know. I just know it. Then he turned to Clifton. So, uh, will you please put it in like a, a big important frame, like like this one? The painting on the wall had an enormous carved wooden frame painted in gold, and it looked very important. <laughs> of course, said Clifton, who was becoming more and more fond of this funny little wombat. But listen, Ferguson, I feel that I should warn you. Having your portrait painted is not enough to make you famous. In fact, usually people have their portraits painted after they've become famous. You see, the artist is the one who becomes famous for painting portraits. Not the subject, or rather, the person who isn't painting. But if you still want it to be painted, we can get it started next week. Fall on gum, said Ferguson as he jumped up and down on the spot. Here, said Clifton, and he pulled a white card out of his pocket and handed it to Ferguson. My business card. Ferguson grabbed the card eagerly. He was very impressed. A business card? How important. He read the card slowly. Clifton Pugh, artist, diploma in educational art, and PhD. What are all those letters after your name? asked Ferguson. They tell you all about me and the work that I can do, answered Clifton. I did lots of study at school to get those. Wow, 
Sounds like Clifton was very good at what he did. Ferguson couldn't take his eyes off the business card. Business card, he repeated over and over again. How oh, very important. That night, Ferguson made up lots of funny little poems and songs, all to do with business cards. He stuck the card in the top of his hat for everyone to see. He put the hat in the middle of the floor of his burrow and danced around it. Sounds like Ferguson's having lots of fun. You're in Ferguson's situation. Is there anything else you might do? Ferguson's got a big goal, doesn't he? And we know before that Ferguson isn't always the best at planning. But it sounds like Clifton's got a lot of experience. And a lot of understanding. If we were Ferguson, perhaps we could ask Clifton some questions. If I wanted to become famous, Clifton, what could I do? What kind of things do I need to know? Is there anything I should be wondering about? Anything I should be careful of? Or anything that's exciting? These are all good things. And what Ferguson could do is use what he has available. So he's got Clifton available and lots of friends. He can even see that Clifton knows some other famous people. Maybe he could ask him to talk to some of those people too. And ask them questions as well. Sometimes the more information we have, the easier it is to understand how to get to a goal. And we can do that not by doing anything big or important or fancy, but just by making sure we add some time in to ask some questions. I can't wait to see what Ferguson gets up to next. Do you think he'll get his portrait painted? I can't wait to see it if that's the case. Might look nice in my castle. I'll see you all later. Bye bye.